Welcome to the third and final part of my Pikmin vs. Retrospective. If you haven't seen my videos on Pikmin 2 or 3, I would advise watching those first for context to this video. Otherwise, this video is supported and voted on by patrons such as Lilypad, Some Crazy Idiot, David Pacheco, and Ralph W. Kelly. Thank you all, and let's finish this. I ain't gonna waste your time with this one, I'm just gonna come out swinging. Pikmin 4's vs. Mode Dandori Battle is the most disappointed I've been of anything gaming related in a long time. Pikmin 3's Bingo Battle is practically a staple of my household. My friends and I have played it almost every week for what has to have been nearly two years by this point. For a lot of people, the multiplayer component of these games is seen as an afterthought, but not us. I'm such a diehard fan of the multiplayer that when I finally got my hands on Pikmin 4, the first thing I played was not the story, but the verses. After playing all six maps. Yes, six. We'll get there. My cousin, who I was playing with, and I had the same takeaway. This doesn't even compare to the previous multiplayer offerings in past titles. And if you like it, it's not like that's anything to be ashamed of. It isn't that it's incompetent or anything. I'm sure for most people, all this mode is to them, and really all it needed to be is just a fun little distraction a part of the main story mode. And to be completely fair, in that context, it does its job well, adding some variety to the core game loop. It's not what you play the game for, but as brief additions to your typical Pikmin playthrough. It's fun enough, but as a standalone game mode on the menu, and especially as a follow-up to Pikmin 3's Bingo Battle, this was a massive disappointment. Starting from the top, Dandori Battle sees you, playing as either your custom character, Colin, or Shepard, facing up against either Olimar or Louie. Despite the custom character being a huge part of Pikmin 4's identity, the second player does not get the option to play as one and can only choose either Olimar or Louie. Not that it matters too much, since for whatever reason, despite being able to select a character from your profile, it won't keep any of your assigned hotkeys. Which means, even if you did set a disband hotkey like I did, it doesn't matter and you'll need to awkwardly pause the game and use that dial menu to disband your Pikmin even when using the same profile. Dual Captains is no longer an option, but in its place is Ochi or Moss depending on which player you are. Unlike Dual Captains, however, having a Space Doggy is not an option. You might think that's an obvious restriction since you need them to knock down items on certain maps, but depending on what Pikmin you choose to start with, you can lock yourself out of items on certain maps anyway, so the constraint is a bit odd. The goal of Dandori Battle is to have the most points once the clock hits zero. You get points by carrying back literally anything that could be carried. Pellets, enemies, gold, you name it. There are multipliers set on random items referred to as bonus finds in-game, and the best feature is easily the sneak bomb, which is a tug-of-war sort of mechanic where if you carry this bomb to your opponent's base, they will lose a ton of points. Beyond those two things, that's basically the gist of the mode. Just get more points than your opponent. A lot of the basics return, such as each team having a 50 Pikmin cap. As far as differences from the previous two games, items are now retrieved via capsules you run into instead of carrying back a cherry, which also means you don't have to send a Pikmin back to your base, you can just immediately have it. Suppose it's up for debate whether that changes for the better. Besides glow Pikmin, which are tied to a random roulette item, maps are now only built around a single Pikmin type. Unfortunate, given two Pikmin types per map added a ton of strategy in 3's bingo battles. Enemies and items endlessly spawn now, makes enough sense given the only end condition this time around is the timer itself. In the last big difference is the AI of the Pikmin themselves. They might not be brain dead like they were in bingo battle, but that's mostly due to the fact that they can't interact with other Pikmin at all anymore. They can't even attack the opponent's captain now. We'll definitely get back to this since this change removes much of the competitive aspect the previous games had. I figured the best way to go about this is to break everything up into segments as to not get muddled in the hundreds of notes I took for this video. Let's start with settings. More game settings is something both 2 and 3 were sorely lacking. By comparison, Pikmin 4 has the most settings in the versus mode to date, but in a sick twist of fate, not only are none of them the settings you would actually want, you certainly can't configure enemy health, spawn rates, respawn time, nothing like that. But in a bizarre decision, they're all tied together into a single difficulty slider. If you want to start with a bunch of Pikmin for sh** and giggles, that difficulty setting will also make Ochi insanely OP and start you off with five items. Or hey, want to crank up the challenge and start with just a single Pikmin? My friends and I like doing that from time to time in Pikmin 3 after all. Well, if you choose to do that, you straight up can't use the charge horn. <laughs> what? That's just like a basic game function. It's like if in Smash Bros when you picked a higher difficulty for classic mode, you just couldn't use smash attacks. Like, yeah, I guess that does make it harder in a roundabout way, but that also makes it significantly less fun to play. Puzzling decision to combine all these options together aside, if there's going to be a difficulty slider, it should be the change to skill level of the computer player. In the campaign, Almar and eventually Louis get much better as you progress for the game, but at least from what I can tell, the quote-unquote difficulty, nor whether you make the computer player Almar or Louis, actually affects their skill level outside the story mode. There are some global settings, like being able to turn off bonus finds and the sneak bomb as mentioned previously 
previously, both seemingly contributing to the aspects of Dandori Battle that encourage the most strategy you'll see from the mode, so I advise against it. You can also change the type of Pikmin you'll be using, which would be cool if the Sages themselves took it into consideration, but they don't. Dandori Castle has an electric gate for Yells to take down that, unless you want to cross your fingers that you roll a bomb and then blow it on that wall, you simply just can't tear down if you don't start with Yellows. Leafy Showdown, same deal. There's glass walls for Rock Pikmin to break, but if you do not have Rock Pikmin, those walls are still there and you just can't break them. Hot Sandy Duel. Hay walls for Reds to burn down, but if you don't have Reds, you can't pick up Fire Starters. As for the maps, we only have six this time around. Half the maps of Pikmin 3, in only two themes. Playroom and Sandbox. At first glance, six less maps and four less themes sucks, but it might not seem like the biggest downgrade. Unfortunately, there's more to it than that. Let's recap. Pikmin 2 had 10 maps. Pikmin 3 had 12 maps. Pikmin 4 has 6 maps. Pikmin 2 has 7-ish themes. It's debatable since Battlefield, Warpath, Angle Maze, and Dim Labyrinth are all dark caves with majorly dirt floors. But the layouts themselves are different enough and there's a handful of aesthetic variances to at least split the diff, counting them as having two unique themes between the four. Pikmin 3 distinctly splits the maps into two per theme, making a total of six themes. Then Pikmin 4 has two themes. Pikmin 2, with two exceptions, has three variations per stage, plus the ability to randomly generate each map on every stage. Pikmin 3 once again had three variations per stage, each variation often supplying different Pikmin types, and different hazards or enemies to compensate for said variations included Pikmin. Pikmin 4 has no variations, not even when swapping out the provided Pikmin type as established. Laying it out like that makes it abundantly clear that map variety, not just sheer quantity, is a significant downgrade from 2 and 3. They made unique map themes for Bingo Battle that were not present in the game's story mode, but Dandori Battle didn't even need to take it that far. Start to finish, Pikmin 4 has the most visually diverse environments in the entire series. Underground Japanese dry gardens, swamps, aquariums, stink-ass tile rooms, some dude's house. Pikmin 4 is in no way bankrupt for suitable textures and other various assets they can recycle from the main game to add some more level variety to verses. Hell, even if they are only going to have two themes, get more creative with the lighting. Have fun with it. We see this in the Dandori Challenge Ice Cross Course. It's the same theme used in Dandori Battles, it's the playroom theme, but simply changing the lighting conditions goes a long way in making this map truly feel different. Having all six maps use what appears to be the same exact lighting in everything makes each map feel interchangeable from the last. But alright, let's be fair here and at least give Dandori Battle the same treatment as the last two games by looking at each map one by one. Trial Run is your first basic starter map, a little too basic. This is the smallest introduction stage thus far. Both bases are right across from each other with nothing else besides two dirt walls hiding a gold pile and two elevated platforms that can spawn a strawberry. I mean, you're basically looking at the entire map right now. Battle in a Box is another open playroom map, with the focal point being a center bulb orb that seemingly respawns every 5 seconds. Not a bad map, but not much else going on here. Dandori Castle is very similar in layout to Jigsaw Fortress from Bingo Battle, in that one player starts at the top of the castle, and the other starts at the bottom. Credit where credit is due, it's much more balanced than its Pikmin 3 equivalent. Although that is mostly due to the fact that this map is a quarter of the size. It's not that small in comparison to the other stages in 4, but saying it's a fourth of the size of Jigsaw Fortress is not an exaggeration. Leafy Showdown is a map with zero leaves. I think maybe it's called that because there's dapple cheating from the moving leaves above you, but all three sandbox maps have this lighting effect, so <laughs> I don't know. The layout itself is alright. It has some interesting ideas, like having a cromad in the center puddle that is really tricky to deal with if you start with the default of Rock Boys. Although, if you don't start with Rock Boys, the players feel too segregated since the only way to the other side is this small path with pottery you need to break. I like all the intricacies on paper, but there's hardly any player interaction on this one. Hot Sandy Duel's layout is most defined by the hay walls you get rid of with fire starters. Burn them down and you're left with a wide open map. The inclusion of the fiery bulb orb is a bizarre choice given the single type restriction, because either you have the default of reds and it being fiery is a non-issue, or you don't have reds and you can't deal with it at all without getting specific items. Ochi can get a fire resistant collar, but if you're not playing with reds, that means you aren't playing story mode, which in turn means Ochi does not have that collar. The fiery bulb wax might be there so you can burn the hay near him without reds, but to even get his attention, you'd either have to run into him and almost die, set Pikmin on fire, or go around wasting time, just hoping you eventually get the right item. In any scenario, it's not very well designed. It's even worse on the other side of the map because if you want these apples, you have to slowly lure this pancake over. It's not worth the time, trust me. The last stage is appropriately named Final Battle, and is a playroom map where both teams start on opposing sides of this block pyramid. There's a baldy long legs that terrorizes the top of the stage. Unlike in Pikmin 3, there's not much of an incentive to defeat him since all he drops is a bunch of weights. Weights can never be bonus finds, so it's diminishing returns given the time you'll take to get rid of him. Beyond that guy, there's not that much to write home about besides the fact that this is the largest stage in Pikmin 4. Funnily enough, it's still smaller than many of the maps in 
two or three. That's all six stages, and you probably noticed a reoccurring theme. They're all fairly small. I suppose this is because items respawn in four, unlike previous versus modes, but one thing I really liked about the other games, and hell, something I really like about the Dandori challenges in four, is that it made you feel like a scavenger. You were exploring the map, familiarizing yourself with item locations, and making future game plans based on what you know. It creates this feeling of really mastering a stage. If you're anything like me, you really struggled with the Sage Leaf Trials in Pikmin 4 the first time you played those stages. But if you're also like me, you have since beat all those stages you once found impossible. And that's what Pikmin is all about. Planning and management based on what you know. The multiplayer component adds some randomness between roulette items, your bingo board in the case of three, and of course your opponent themselves. All that is welcome though. The important part is that in Pikmin 2, and especially Pikmin 3, you could make an educated game plan based on the map and what you know about it. When all six stages are this interchangeable, this small, and with enemies and items respawning left and right, you're no longer a scavenger clearing out a map, and there's no longer much of a game plan to be made. It doesn't even feel like you're progressing to be honest. You're now just aimlessly doing laps, grabbing the same respawning items over and over until the time is up. A timer you cannot adjust, mind you. You would think if they're adding a timer, one of the settings they would absolutely make sure to add is a setting to just how long you play on each map, but there's no setting to speak of. The amount of time you spend on each map is instead dictated by the map itself. Like if you play on Leafy Showdown, you have to play for 7 minutes. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The game could be fun in that aimless, mobile game sort of way, but there's not that much of a thought process throughout the match. A lot of that is due to the next point, the scoring. The value of any particular object is determined by its weight, which definitely makes things easier to understand, but it also brings the value of virtually every enemy and object into question. Like those crab guys. Those things can be pretty annoying, right? Well, they only weigh three, so therefore you only get three points for killing them and then bringing the corpse back. They will sprout four Pikmin, sure, but you know what will both sprout more Pikmin and result in more points? A five pellet? And those can't even kill Pikmin. The fact a five pellet is more valuable than an enemy that can both stall and kill Pikmin is insane. In previous entries, pellets were only something you bothered with if you absolutely needed more Pikmin. Obviously, the more Pikmin you have, the better, but you had to knock it down, carry it back to your onion, and then pluck the new Pikmin. This was great because, as simple as it is, it was a calculated decision the player had to make. Go after the objective with your current army, or take the time to build your numbers first. Now that carry weight is equivalent to points, they're functionally not that different from anything else you can grab. In fact, they're better. You can carry back a 10 pellets, and not only is that 10 Pikmin like you'd usually get, but that's also 10 points. Points. There's no longer any time management decisions you need to make with the pellets. Just grab them just as you would anything else in front of you now. Not to mention, unlike Pikmin 2 or 3, pellets will never change color. For the two of you that don't know, if a pellet is the same color as a Pikmin carrying it back, it will yield more sprouts. In Dandori Battle, the color of the pellet will always be the color of the one Pikmin type you have, so not even the timing mechanic is present. You will always get max Pikmin with pellets now. The decision to tie weight and value is especially questionable when it comes to the heavier objects. They flow the Golden Sniffer as this really big deal. They even pause the game to tell you about it the first time it's encountered. It's positioned as this super rare item that gives you a ton of points, and comparatively, it does. Its value is 30, but its weight is also 30, meaning you need to expend more than half your team to grab it. I also don't like what difficulty you play on determining how good of an idea it is to stick Ochi on it, since sure, in story mode, you can just have Ochi take care of the Sniffer since you'll be counting as 30 pretty early on, but if you're playing versus off the menu and say start with five Pikmin, which is what me and my friends like to do. Ochi will only count for 10, and considering the versatility of Ochi, it's not worth not having him for however long if you still need to be short 20 Pikmin. If such a heavy item is only worth its weight, and it cannot be affected by a bonus multiplier, then you might as well split up your work getting everything else you find around you. Especially when maps are so small, you will, intentionally or not, be going after bonus finds constantly, which will obviously yield a bigger return, especially if said bonus find is something like a small bulborb that are everywhere, and will also yield more Pikmin. As if pellets or small bulborbs being valued by their weight didn't make them good enough, you don't even need to pluck the sprouts they produce. Pikmin will now immediately just hop out of the onion. I've seen this praised as a good thing since it speeds up gameplay, but plucking Pikmin isn't some arbitrary decision they randomly threw in that doesn't add anything to the game. In fact, especially in the context of a versus mode, it's quite the opposite. Let me paint you a scenario. A very common one, mind you, of why having the pluck Pikmin is a good design choice. You're at your base and have over 20 Pikmin that can be added to your squad as soon as you pluck them. But your 
your opponent is carrying back the winning item. Time is of the essence. Having said that, every additional Pikmin you can add to your army is going to matter. So a real predicament is created when needing to decide how much time you should actually spend plucking Pikmin. Some people might choose to not pluck any at all and deal with the current squad they have, while others may cut it close, plucking as many Pikmin as possible so they can contest their opponent with a bigger squad. However, if you take too long, it's not going to matter how big your squad is because you won't be able to stop your opponent in time. This is a pretty basic scenario, but again, a very probable one. In fact, I think having to pluck your Pikmin makes more sense in Versus than it does in the story mode. Because in story mode, if you have 80 out of 100 Pikmin out and are bringing something back, you're going to have to pluck all those Pikmin as soon as that corpse returns. But in every game, you could just pull out 20 to make sure you have a total of 100 out in the field, even if it's a color you don't want. And then once that corpse returns, the Pikmin you would have had to pluck just get added to your reserves. And from there, you can just pull them out without plucking a single one. In Versus, there is no onion management, so there's no way to cheese things. Which means plucking every Pikmin you make is a mandatory part of the game, and as such, is a time sink you must factor into your strategy. Again, in a pinch, sometimes it might be smarter to just play with what you got and leave your Pikmin in the ground. None of this forethought can exist when you're immediately just given the Pikmin. Hell, you don't even have to be at your onion. You can just use Idler's Alert to make sure that any and all Pikmin at your onion are always coming to you. Now it's just go, go, go. No time to think or strategize. Just thing with the stuff until the timer says you can't stuff. Look, I'm an impatient guy too. So from a surface level glance, I can understand why people think plucking Pikmin is annoying, but its removal is not worth sacrificing that extra layer of strategic depth that comes with it, as minor as it may have seemed, just so us more impatient players don't have to press A every now and then. After all, Pikmin at its core is a game about time management, and having to manage time to pluck Pikmin plays directly into that theme. Hands down, the most damning change in Dory Battle saw was the AI of the Pikmin themselves. On one end, the manner in which Pikmin interacted with each other in Pikmin 3 was easily the worst part of Bingo Battle, but instead of fixing it and making interactions more similar to how they worked in Pikmin 2's Marble Battle, they've gone in the complete opposite direction and removed Pikmin interactions entirely. This means no more eliminating opponent Pikmin of your squad, and no more stalling a captain by putting your Pikmin on them. The removal of this aspect makes Dandori Battle feel less like a battle mode that has you directly competing, and more so like two players that happen to be doing a challenge mode level simultaneously. For whatever reason, you can still attack your opponent's dog, which might be useful if there was a respawn time, but the second you knock them out, they almost immediately respawn. <laughs> no joke, I think they're only out for three seconds tops. Considering how small the maps are, and how long it can potentially take to knock them out to begin with, the last semblance of anything PvP is pretty worthless now, and is another reason they should really just let you turn the dogs off in the settings. This also means the method of stealing items has been completely reworked, and although I do prefer how it worked in Pikmin 2 the most, their workaround now that PvP is gone isn't half bad. So as you would expect, if you got something that is 3 Pikmin heavy, you need to put 3 Pikmin on it to carry it. But now, if you throw your Pikmin on an item your opponent is carrying, instead of them simply fighting said Pikmin, your Pikmin will also grab onto it, slowing down their progress. And if you can't exceed the number of opponent Pikmin on an object, you will outpower them, stealing the item, causing all of their Pikmin to fall on their ass. Again, it's not a bad system. Or at least, it wouldn't be, was it not for the last thing. See, when you get Pikmin to fall over, they will just lay there, indefinitely, until the corresponding captain whistles their Pikmin to get back up. This feature is, without a doubt, the absolute worst part of Dandori Battle. If after getting knocked out, they got up and idle, that would be one thing. But no, they will just lay all across the battlefield. The reason this is such a terrible feature is because if you're doing multiple tasks, which if you're even at a intermediate skill level, you should be, you'll find yourself constantly trying to whistle your Pikmin off the ground, unintentionally stalling, or even worse, canceling other ongoing tasks if your other Pikmin are nearby, and given the size of the maps, they will be. If you completely overpowered your opponent, it'd make a little sense, but no. All you need is a single Pikmin over your opponent, even on something as tiny as a one pellet, and all their Pikmin decide it's nap time. And don't misconstrue this. This isn't a matter of difficulty as much as it is a matter of annoyance. In fact, if anything, the feature only gets worse the better you are. Because if you're doing things on all corners of the map, and your opponent steals your items on all corners of the map, you'll constantly be backtracking to all the spots you've been to get all your Pikmin back up. It's like the game is actively punishing you for trying to multitask. But hey, if you only focus on a single thing at a time, babysitting each and every carry back to your onion, this feature is fine. Making the whistle stall task in recent Pikmin games is already a feature I despise. In Pikmin 1 or 2, it was nice to just be like, oh, there should be three less Pikmin on that. <laughs> 
boom, done. But now, with the whole stall everything in the vicinity, and hold to actually whistle Pikmin off, you can't easily do that. Especially since holding the whistle will make your radius obnoxiously large, making it near impossible to not cancel nearby tasks. And as much as I hate that change, this laying down sh** is the final evolution of that annoyance. All I want to do is get these dumb motherfuckers off their asses. And now I'm stalling and canceling all these tasks because everything is so tightly packed. Why would they add something like this? Whistling canceling tasks is annoying in a way that does not seem intentional. Circling the map without my Pikmin, trying to find out where on the ground they're lying, stalling all these other tasks in the process is not fun. If this laying down thing was really going to be a feature, they're needs to be two separate whistle buttons. One that will whistle all Pikmin regardless of what they're doing, like how it used to be in one or two, and another that will only whistle Pikmin not performing a task. But at that point, we're only making an already cluttered feeling control scheme, looking at you action wheel, even more convoluted. Also, no direct Pikmin PvP means you can't do a thing about your opponent carrying gold. Truly, you just can't stop an opponent Pikmin from carrying gold. Not unless you, I guess, maybe not only happen to have a bomb, but can perfectly time that sh even then, that's a pretty big waste of a bomb. And that's really strange, because Pikmin 3 had grape stacks, which were functionally similar to gold piles, but you were able to stop an opponent from carrying those. It's as if Nintendo went out of their way to desensitize any PvP interactions that define a versus mode. Of course, with no Pikmin interactions, and no permanent knockouts like I showed you with the dogs, it resulted in the removal of corresponding win conditions. Both Pikmin 2 and 3 had four win conditions that would end a game. The main objective, which was collect four yellow marbles for two, and get a bingo for three, cause your opponent to get a captain down, induce their Pikmin extinction, or steal the colored item from their base. Having multiple win conditions gave players a lot more to think about, especially stealing the colored item from your opponent's base. Now in four, we only have a single win condition. Wait for the time to run out, and have the most points once that happens. Any semblance of a capture the flag element is no longer present, and both the player and Ochi, despite having health bars, will immediately respawn. All of this results in a much less varied game mode overall. If there's one element I can compliment Dandori Battle for. It's the Sneak Bomb. The Sneak Bomb will show up about halfway through the game. Its spawn location will differ depending on who's currently winning. As I say, if you're in the lead, it will spawn closer to your base since you do not want it. Then from there, you need to put at least five Pikmin on it to start moving the bomb to your opponent's base, causing them to lose up to 100 points if it makes it there. In Dandori Battle, the peak of strategy is when the Sneak Bomb is introduced. Not only does it become a game of tug of war, but you need to think about how many Pikmin should I put on the bomb? Should I put only a few on there so I can multitask elsewhere? If one is arriving to your onion, is it worth going out of your way to cancel all your ongoing tasks so you can have more Pikmin to prevent it? I don't like how it pauses the game with a cutscene you have to skip. Seriously, you shouldn't have to skip a cutscene in a Pikmin versus mode. But otherwise, I really do like the implementation of the sneak bomb. In my opinion, I believe it to be the most interesting thing about Dandori Battle, which is saying a lot when the feature itself is treated as a throwaway option that can be turned off entirely. It's the one element that reinforces the competitive aspect of a competitive mode the most. I mean, you can make a game mode with just the sneak bomb. Have five of them spawn as soon as the match starts. Each base gets three lives. Get three sneak bombs to your opponent's base to win. I don't know, I think there's something there. The last major thing to cover is the items, now called mystery capsules. Nine items in total in Pikmin 4, which is the lowest number we've seen thus far, and only two new ones. Three if you want to be really generous and count the plus five glow Pikmin. But Pikmin 3 likewise had a plus five that gave you Pikmin of a type you did not start with, which is more or less what the plus five glowies is. 5 Pikmin of a type you didn't start with. Although the cut for a bit of slack, I'd argue all the most important items are here. You got your plus 10 Pikmin, which now spawns them directly on you opposed to sprouting seeds at your onion, plus 5 Glowies, which is the same thing except with Glow Pikmin, Lightning Shock, which is similar to its Bingo Battle iteration, stunning your opponent's Pikmin. Notable difference is that it actually works on yellows in this game, despite them typically being impervious to electricity. The Mine is the same as 3 Sensor Bomb, except in 4, it's thrown by your Captain instead of your Pikmin, which I think makes the item a lot better, or at least that aspect of it is better. They can no longer be set off by the thrower, which is a huge downgrade. So if you're like, hey, I don't have yellows to take down this electric gate, but I have this mine I can use, well, you better think again because it doesn't work like that anymore. It's now an item you throw, but can only be triggered by enemies or your opponent. So everything but you. The Trackinator is a bomb on wheels that will automatically track down enemies and even the other player's dog. It can't track down opponent Pikmin, unfortunately, but still a pretty cool item. Bewilder Bomb, the second new 
item, drops a ball of ink on your opponent making all their Pikmin and their space doggies scurry around the map until whistled, it won't actually kill Pikmin despite them coughing like they do when they're poisoned. Rockstorm is nothing like it was in Pikmin 3. As mentioned when talking about Pikmin 3's bingo battle, it was, hands down, the most devastating item in the series. It came out immediately, and the spawn locations of the rocks were extremely unpredictable. I want to show some math because there were a decent number of people who, I presume, thought they were being helpful by saying, just roll, but it's a bit more complicated than that. And if nothing else, this will give a good idea for how insane the item was in Bingo Battle for anyone who hasn't played it. You can't just respond to the opponent using the item, because you don't want to do a roll before seeing where the boulder is falling, just to roll under the boulder. We can agree on that much, right? So you need to respond to the drop shadow, not the activation itself. Alright, well check this out. Seventeen frames from when the item was triggered to when it kills all those Pikmin. Average visual reaction time is a quarter of a second. Eight frames in this case. Time from your thumb to move to the stick to the awkwardly placed directional buttons, plus hitting the correct button. About four more frames if you're being fast. Then we add the average latency of your monitor or TV of game mode on, plus the inherent latency of the game itself, plus the delay for your Pikmin to respond to a roll command. Because yes, there is a bit of delay between the time you issue the command from when the Pikmin respond to said command. All that is about ten frames. Then of course the number of frames it takes for them to roll from their current location to a spot that's actually safe, a final 12 more frames. And that 12 is being extremely generous because this is how much they move in 12 frames. <laughs> Altogether, that is 32 frames. Meaning in most scenarios, given you're not assuming where the rocks will fall and are actually responding to the drop shadow, it is literally impossible to dodge in time with a roll. Even when removing the variable of reaction time or thumb speed, we're still over 17 frames. The TLDR is the boulder is a broken item, everyone who's played bingo extensively knows it, and as much as I appreciate people trying to help, anyone who tells you just roll has clearly not played much versus in comparison to how long they spent on the other modes. It's not the same principle as rolling from a predictable and telegraphed enemy attack. A rock can spawn anywhere. The boulder may have been broken in 3, but in 4, it's practically useless. They really overcorrected on this one. Now when you use it, it unironically takes about 2 seconds until your opponent sees the first drop shadow. And unlike Pikmin 3 where the drop shadow was affected by the lighting engine making it extremely hard to know exactly where the boulder is falling from, the drop shadow in 4 will always be directly under the rock. Even and then, boulders are now so small, so spread out, and move so slow, you have a full 2 seconds, 60 frames running at 30 FPS, compared to Bingo 17, to dodge them. So I guess in a roundabout way, this means someone at Nintendo knows how broken they were before, but they've gone from being broken to being worthless. The warp, an item that teleports your opponent to a random location, has also been nerfed, albeit in this case, that's only due to the maps being so small now. Then your final item is the spicy spray, charging up all your Pikmin. Unlike the last two battle modes, you don't have a reserve for them, so rolling it on the roulette is the only way to get them now. Much like story mode, it will power up all your Pikmin, not just the ones with you, making the item the best it's ever been. Maybe even too good actually. An argument could be made that it's the best item on the roulette now. A final, albeit perhaps minor point in comparison to everything else I've talked about, is the load times. Pikmin 4 is a phenomenal looking game. The best looking game on the Switch in my opinion. Like look at that f***ing wet sand. Like holy sh how did they get that sand that looks so damn good? So when it takes 10 years to load, I get it. Loading times is the most common, and honestly, I think the only consistent complaint of Pikmin 4 among all gamers besides maybe the incessant talking and tutorials at the start of the game. But in story mode, not only is the loading much more understandable given the impressive scale of the maps, but it's also a lot more tolerable given the more relaxed pacing. But for Dan Dory Battle, the loading times being double that of Pikmin 3's Bingo Battle is not only less justifiable given the limited variety of textures and models used on these maps, but also less acceptable given the nature of a multiplayer mode. The more you can avoid loading screens in an offline multiplayer game, the better. I mean, it's half the reason the N64 established its title as the party console and the PlayStation, you know, didn't. That's not a knock against the PS1, but long loading times would have killed the appeal to games like Mario Party. And it kills the vibe in Dandori Battle, especially if they're trying to go for a faster pace versus mode compared to what we saw in previous games. Like I said at the start, Dandori Battle is by no means a bad mode. I do like the mode's inclusion in the story mode, and there, some of its shortcomings such as a lack of stage variety isn't a huge deal since the real variety is in the main levels, and these Dandori Battles are just fun little distractions to break up the 
the gameplay, but as the game's only true multiplayer offering, and especially as a follow-up to 2 or 3's battle mode, this just isn't enough. And obviously, I'm a huge fan of Pikmin's versus components, but even outside my preferences, not having any other two-player offerings in Pikmin 4 only makes Dandori battle seem like an even bigger slap to the face. My cousin, who's like one of three Pikmin fans I actually know outside a computer screen, made a really good point when we were playing versus that I wanted to repeat here. In Pikmin 3, we're pretty evenly matched, but in 4, I have a significant skill gap over him. And because unlike 2 or 3, there's no true co-op or anything, he'll never get that opportunity to get any better at the game, or even familiarize himself with the controls, outside a situation where he is literally pitted against me. For him, and basically all my friends, the extent of his playtime is basically limited to the time we play together, so it's not like he's going to go through an entire 20 plus hour campaign on his own. If he wants to get better, he needs to just lose to me for hours until he can eventually catch up to the 60-ish hour lead I have on him in Pikmin 4. And that's no fun. Neither is being on a fucking baby mode handicap. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, plus literally every friend I've ever had in the rest of the internet feels differently. But even if you're not as experienced in a game as someone you're playing against, it just feels sh be the play of a handicap, because if you do win, it's just like, oh, it was just a handicap. Sh is just constantly happening. That visible progress of seeing the map empty out is no longer there when you're running back and forth grabbing respawning items. Whether it's the main game, the missions, or the verses from 2 or 3, Pikmin has always been a game about making long-term strategies. When items are constantly respawning left and right, and the bonus finds are swapping out just as rapidly, you're no longer making long-term strategies, you're just playing on autopilot reacting to things. Even when first introducing my friends to Pikmin, there was the odd time where they were able to beat me at 3 and even 2, despite having way more experience of Pikmin. And that's because it didn't only boil down to who's better at Pikmin. A big part of it was also who can strategize better. But for Dandori battle, it's just who's the best at Pikmin 4. And that's the full extent of it. I annihilate my friends when we play 4, and that's no fun for anyone. Not even me. When making a versus mode that is more about respawning quickly and being familiar with the mechanics, skill comes down to just playtime. As long as you're grabbing everything, you're doing well in Dandori Battle. But again, that's just familiarity of Pikmin 4 itself opposed to strategy. And don't misinterpret me here, I do think a player's familiarity with a game should be a huge determining factor. But in a strategy game, your strategy, and not just your familiarity of the game's controls and mechanics, should be a much bigger factor than it is in Dandori Battle. The bonus multiplier might seem like the game's saving grace to add some strategy, but I can tell you right now that it's not. It's more functional as a catch-up mechanic, since it will give the losing player a higher multiplier than it is a mechanic that drives the way you play. I played two games back-to-back, -back, one where I only went for bonus finds, and another where I just grabbed everything around me, and the one where I just grabbed everything in my vicinity yielded a higher score. Unless you're losing and have a large multiplier, or there are multiples in one spot, it's simply not worth getting any bonus find that isn't readily available. If you had to take trips back to your onion to gather Pikmin, a bonus find that is buried, for example, might have actually been worth it. Because you'd go back, collect your Pikmin so you'd have a full squad, you could have made future plans by looking at bonus finds and being like, alright, that's my next target. But when you can have your Pikmin come to you at any given moment with the idler's alert, it simply makes more sense to just grab everything as you circle the map. You almost always have Pikmin on you, and you're collecting so many things in such a short span of time. Odds are you're already gathering the bonus find, or are already making your way towards it. So hyper fixating on bonus finds opposed to just playing fast isn't worth it in this scenario. Even when I win by 300 points, I don't feel like a master strategist. It's not that I played smart, it's that I played fast. It's mind numbing. If this is what Pikmin 4's so-called Dandori is at its core, then Dandori is straight up just not interesting. It's as if Nintendo went around asking a bunch of people what parts they didn't like about Pikmin. Stuff like having to return back to your onion or pluck Pikmin, and went ahead and did away with them. But in doing so, they made an experience that feels disposable. And to be clear, I don't mind Idler's Alert or anything like that in the story mode. In fact, I might as well add that I think Pikmin 4 has the most substantial story mode in the series. However, for the sake of a versus component, these changes don't sit well with me. You ever buy a game that had some sort of battle mode that was just like there, like it was clearly an afterthought, but you didn't really care because that's not what you bought the game for to begin with? That's exactly what Pikmin 4's two-player is like. Because seemingly to most people, it is like who cares. And that's 
bucks because Pikmin has so much to offer in a competitive environment. People might look at these versus modes as throwaway additions, but especially as a diehard Pikmin fan, these are the modes that give the games their replay value. I love them to death, and it honestly upsets me that when people talk about these games, they are rarely even mentioned. Unfortunately, the insignificance of Pikmin's versus mode seems to be a sentiment Nintendo themselves agrees with, because they put all their chips in on the story. That story in 4 really is fantastic, but I wish Versus got some of that love as well, because as is, it feels like something they added out of obligation. From the quirky bits of character of Pikmin 2's Versus, to the fact 3's Bingo Battle has more stage slash visual variety than the main game itself, you can tell that they, at least at one point, really cared about the quality of what are often treated as throwaway inclusions. I mean, they went from implementing Bingo into a competitive RTS, which is like, stupidly creative, to just get the most points, which is the most normalized win condition in any game. The determining win condition for knowing who won a game of Dandori Battle shouldn't be the same as determining who won a game of Scrabble. Congrats, your number was bigger. I think the most frustrating part is that Pikmin 4 had all the cards stacked in its favor. It has the most enemies, the most environments, the most Pikmin, in two other battle modes it can use as reference. I'm super happy Pikmin 4 was a success and introduced more people to the series, but it could have also ignited more interest in the competitive scene had they gone all out with it. You think being a Pikmin fan is hard? Try being a fan of competitive Pikmin. Multiplayer Pikmin is one of my favorite things in all of gaming, and yet here we are. If you've only experienced battle mode in 4, I implore you to grab a friend at a similar skill level to you if you can, and try out the others. Pikmin 2 was a fantastic start to the formula, it has the best Pikmin AI when it comes to PvP, and the randomly generated sages is a great touch. Pikmin 3 has the overall best versus offering. Not every stage is great, but there's great variety, and the bingo angle is a ton of fun. Pikmin 4's Dandori battle has a few good ideas, the sneak bomb being a standout in my eyes, but outside its implementation in the main game, which does provide some nice variety, the strategy on offer is much too shallow to seriously consider playing this over two-player battle or bingo battle. It leaves me feeling worried about the future of multiplayer in the Pikmin series. With the multiplayer component in Pikmin 4 being such an afterthought, and it's still being the best-selling title in the series regardless. I think the big takeaway for Nintendo is going to be that multiplayer doesn't matter, consumers don't care. So as my request to everyone, grab friends and play Pikmin multiplayer in any way you can. Show your love and support any modders out there putting in the work to expand the multiplayer component of these games. And not just the versus stuff. But, you know, if someone actually does do a mod for 3's bingo battle specifically, especially show your love to that person. That being said, thank you all for following this look through Pikmin's various versus modes. Thank you to any other avid supporters of these modes, and here's to hoping this isn't the last we hear from multiplayer Pikmin. Hey, thank you so much for watching. You have no idea how long this took. I'd like to give a huge thanks to patrons such as your boy Busby, Pig the Pork, Ralph W. Kelly, Alizard, Digi, Evan Halbert, Some Crazy Idiot, Ian, David Marquezzi, Kinzel Tien, Drew Kellenberger, Dave Pacheco, Victoria Mars, and Amanda Guth. Have fun playing Pikmin, and until next time, have a good one.